Hello, everybody, and um, just do a quick introduction. Uh, I'm Craig Woodburn. I'm Environmental Compliance Manager for Jaguar Land Rover, working across the globe. Um, my responsibilities um, include leading on circular economy within our business. So I'm embedding that across the business, but also across our vehicle lines and, and vehicle attributes as, as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm an environmentalist by background, but um, leading on this um, approach that we are undertaking. And obviously I work for Jaguar Land Rover, premium automotive company, uh, manufacturer of the first all-electric SUV, the I-Pace, um, currently holder of three world titles, the World Green Car of the Year, World Design Car of the Year, and um, World Car of the Year. So, um, and one of the parts I'll be talking about relates to the I-Pace. So, um, first slide, we're responsible business. Um, what you can see on the screen are five of our imperatives. Um, and we've already touched upon um, a, a number of actions where, as businesses, we trying to embed some of the, our activities and, and processes going forward across the environmental arena. We need to work with colleagues, we need to work with other businesses, and we need to work collectively to make those things um, and aspirations and targets deliverable. Uh, I'll be talking about the circular economy, um, and as you can see, we've got um, environmental and education skills, technology for good, value beyond their boundaries, and advancing environmental innovation. All of these, when grouped together, they overlap significantly within our business. Um, and so we could be working on one of those topics, but need to work, for example, in the circular economy with value beyond their boundaries. We're working with our supply chain and working with BASF on um, chem cycling um, opportunities and activities here today. So for us, it's a method where we can see um, opportunities to upcycle um, some of the consumer waste, um, that's out there in, and obviously has been highlighted as a, um, a concern both across various various media channels, various um, countries and, and obviously in terms of legislative approaches, um, new legislations coming out across the EU um, to target and improve and manage how we manage those um, waste going forward. And this circular economy approach on chem cycling gives an opportunity to um, upcycle that waste as well. Um, and obviously looking at it as a, a closed loop opportunity um, to reduce our impact um, on the environment. I won't go into details on circular economy, I think people have touched upon that already. But obviously um, the ability to upcycle rather than um, just dispose in a single uh, linear uh, process is is an improvement um, and that we're all looking forward to being able to um, take forward and develop um, further. <clears throat> As a responsible business, um, circular economy isn't a new topic to us, um, and it fits in with our approach to Destination Zero, which is a, a, um, an area where we've got a new commitment going forward but it also embeds um, some of the processes and aspirations and targets that we've undertaken for a long while. As automotives, there's lots of legislation out there um, as to how we should be moving forward um, and what we have to adhere to. And there's lots of changes within the automotive industry as well, um, electrification being one of them, which, as we said, um, will move things um, drastically forward in terms of a, a whole transition from how we've historically um, moved our vehicles around. Um, and I guess as Destination Zero, um, we're seeking conscious reductions using resources responsibly to build a better society, cleaner environment, and drive sustainable, profitable growth. It's always been embedded um, within our business. Um, recyclability and recoverability within legislation has always been there. Um, and as you can see from these slides, if I look at um, not only our vehicles, but if I look at our production processes, so you can see the different boxes there about we recycle uh, and reuse 99% of all our metal waste in the UK facilities. Our production facilities are green, 
um, building standards. We have BRIAM or LEED, which is the American equivalent of the BRIAM uh, green building standards. So they operate efficiently to manufacture our vehicles in a process that's as efficient as possible. We have zero waste to landfill, um, direct from our operations across all our UK facilities. And we're carbon neutral as well. So we buy electricity and then we offset um, the gas use that, that we, um, we use as well in our facilities. So we already have commitments to minimize our impact. Um, within our vehicles, and, and particularly in relation to chem cycling, we're always looking for opportunities that um, can reduce the impact. The lifetime of a vehicle is a, a number of years. It's not a single-use item, although you might have a single person owning it for that period of time, but it's a multi, multifaceted um, mix of components, 8,000 plus components. Um, out of those, there's numerous components that are plastic and some are uh, very complex in nature. And the chem cycling process gives us the opportunity to look and see how we may be able to use some of that consumer waste to produce um, parts on our vehicles going forward. And we're not just against, um, we're not just looking to, to create waste and looking at upcycling it. We also look and study um, how we can avoid that material in the first place. In some instances, what we were finding as plastics have become so commonplace and often so cheap that um, suppliers were providing and over-packaging parts as they come to us to protect um, and um, ensure the quality of those goods. We've gone and re-examined some of those packaging parts um, and found and identified that often it's not necessarily needed. So we've reduced over 1.3 million uh, square meters of, of plastic waste. That's about 40 million pieces of plastic. Um, and that's not all packaging. That's, that's um, for our staff as well. So that's reduce, uh, reduction and, and removing of uh, single-use cups and knives and forks and other items as well. Um, but we have examined the parts and components as they come into us. And as I said, last but not least, obviously the vehicles. Um, we've also, um, I've already mentioned IPACE and the, and the part that we're going to come on and talk about, particularly on the uh, chem cycling process. I haven't brought a part in with me. It's too large to carry around under my arm. Uh, but there is one in the foyer at the front. Um, it's probably a part of about a metre in length. And you can see it on the picture here. Um, and it's the front end of the IPACE. So it's the front end carrier. So this attaches across the front of the vehicle. Um, we already have it in the, in the vehicle now, but the, the chem cycle process um, produced component isn't in the vehicle now. Um, uh, it, we're obviously just testing and, and developing that to see if it's suitable. Uh, but the part is out there, it's been produced, uh, and we're going through a number of tests now, heat testing, environmental testing, hood and palm testing to look at the environment, um, durability, lifetime, um, and I guess what we should be saying, one thing is, we've only got 9% of plastic currently recycled. Uh, we're aiming for 75% of aluminium, so why can't we do the same with the plastic industry and aim for a higher recycled content? Um, and I guess one thing we should say, and I pointed out, was obviously all these tests, um, one thing we have to do on our vehicles is make sure that safety um, is not um, hindered or affected by uh, utilising a part that is made from uh, recovered plastic, so that's one of the elements that we're looking at as well. So the ability to upcycle low-grade material into complex plastic parts will help to achieve our aims and obviously reduce our overall impact on the environment. Thank you. BASF. We create chemistry.